Hello friends, I hope you can recall our discussion on project identification and selection in lecture 14. Today, we will move one step ahead and as a part of lecture 15, we will talk about project charter and monitoring. So, please understand that just identification of the project is not enough. Once you have identified the project, you need to execute this project appropriately. And to execute the project, you need to have a blueprint of execution and typically this blueprint of execution is called as project charter and monitoring document. So, we will try to appreciate the critical components of project charter and monitoring and also we will see couple of examples and templates to appreciate that how in various ways project charter can be designed. So, just as a small recap, we have talked about voice of customer and how we should use VOC voice of customer in order to identify an appropriate critical project as a Six Sigma project. Once this is the done, I need to convert my customer voice into the process requirement and then couple of measures. So, I have critical to quality, critical to cost, critical to delivery and critical to satisfaction and once I can determine this, then I can really <coughs> say have better identification and monitoring of the project. Then finally, you identify the set of projects, select them and then you try to apply DMAIC cycle for improving those 1 percent or 0.5 percent projects considered as Six Sigma projects. This lecture basically would focus on project charter, elements of the project charter, criteria for project monitoring and steps of monitoring system. So, let us try to see what is a project charter. So, in my way I would say it is a kind of blueprint, a bible of your project and you would like to say follow this document religiously, rigorously and seek the commitment of the team members. So, a project charter is a contract between organizations leadership and the project team. Please understand that organization they are committing the resources, committing for the support and simultaneously team members they need to assure that they would give the desired results by working on a project. So, this is not possible unless they have some strong understanding a contract on set of objectives, deadlines and output and deliverables of the project. So, typically this defines the problem scope and boundary clearly, so that tomorrow there is no dissatisfaction or the conflict between the top management and the team member about the deliverable and the scope of the project. Confirms that the team's plans matches the expectations of senior management, establishes a timeline and serves as a communication vehicle. So, whenever they have to report their performance achievements at different milestones, then they can use this as a reference and report it to the top management as well as within the team. So, project charter in nutshell is the definition of the project, defining the scope and boundary of the project, responsibility. You have a team who will be responsible for what and in what way they will be facilitated. So, responsibility benefits this project will deliver, schedule you can identify the critical path, apply the selective control as I mentioned while discussing activity network diagram, you can draw the schedule and then you have the success criteria. So, the project charter does not solve the problem, remember it is a living document that will change over time. So, many a times there is a misconception and I would like to clarify right at this stage that 
if you have a great charter suppose you have a great iso document doesn't guarantee that you will have excellent quality results or drastic reduction in your defect rates unless you follow it so it's something like we are going to a doctor and doctor prescribe set of medicines and advises some good health tips and then we come back and go back to our old practices definitely our situation will not improve same is the case you may have fantastic beautifully designed project charter document but it will not work unless you real really religiously practice the various objectives targets responsibilities documented within it second thing is a caution that many a times you become extremely rigid with the project charter so remember project charter is a dynamic document i will not say it should be changed for the sake of convenience or internal benefits but it's a dynamic document and as the project advances we may have to include new people we may have to little bit shift the deadlines and we should try to adapt the process of developing project charter evolving project charter in quite a dynamic manner so you have various elements of a project charter and as i mentioned problem statement goal statement scope in and out business case benefits timeline and team members we will see more sophisticated frameworks and templates so project charter first is let us a business case so here i must make it very clear that why it is important to do the project because tomorrow maybe the project team member a leader will not be there and the people may argue that it was just because of his interest this project was started otherwise this project doesn't have much value so it is very important to declare that why this project is important and what is that really critical that company has considered this project as a six sigma project so how is this project aligned with the business goals you have your business plan objectives vision mission statement how this project is aligned with those business goals how will this project impact my customers so already i have captured voc in identifying the project and this again must be appropriately documented that how will this project benefit the customer and the various stakeholders what are the expected financial benefits so this part must be extremely clear otherwise you may end up with a very very poor execution of the project and yield very low revenue or cost reduction so this things creates the business case now let us see the second one problem statement so problem statement it's basically a short description of the use to be addressed and it should not contain solution number 1 root cause and third blame towards a department or individual there is a caution let the problem statement only highlight the gravity of the problem and let there not be any personal issue or root cause otherwise team will get biased problem statement typically answers that what is the problem or issue that is under investigation and what is the measure you are trying to impact where the impact will be seen whether it will be in the terms of customer satisfaction or improved delivery or customer loyalty what so this is where the problem statement makes the sense then you have the goal statement so defines the expected improvement the team is seeking to accomplish in clear concise and measurable terms so i cannot just uh, execute the project without having reasonably achievable goals maybe let us say i am looking for 10% improvement in the capacity utilization i want to shift my process from present 3.4 sigma 
to 4.5 sigma in next one year, then this must be declared. So, the key definitions of the project charter goes like this. In summary, business case, reasons for doing the project, problem statement captured with clear cut definition in the form of measurement, goal statement, measurement goal, usually smart goal, achievable goal are to be established. Scope, the magnitude of the project, what is the boundary and within those boundary, what you are really expecting from the top management. Team members, the people who will not only participate the word I have written here, who will commit for the project. So, here it is the responsibility of the Six Sigma master black belt, black belt to see that they can really have the team members who are passionate about this project, knowledgeable about the issue and they can commit because many a times they have to spare the time from the routine regular work, little bit stay extra for the meetings, discussion and working on the procedures and this will never happen if they do not attach their passion and patience with the project. Preliminary plan typically your actions to be executed with respect to the time. So, I have team charter and elements put in a more sophisticated manner, questioning form. I am trying to highlight the various elements of the project charter in a different format so that you get extremely say aware and sensitized about what to be included and what not to be touched. So, business case couple of questions you can see specific goal statement, project plan, specific problem and opportunity statement, scope and the team selection. Let me share a couple of examples where you can see a particular case and the project charter. So, let us say there is a project charter for flyover construction project with budget of let us say 100 crore Indian rupees. So, typically you can put it in a very simple manner. I am not saying that it would just like be uh, one table. You may have say 10, 20, 50 pages, 100 pages as you like and you like to describe the various elements in detail, but here just it is presented in a concise form, summary form and business case is let us say project name, flyover construction project, problem impact. Many recently completed construction projects have been over budget, negative project variance usually say are associated with delay in the project completion and reduce other funds that may be needed for other kind of projects. Expected benefits reduction in project actual cost. Objectives you see <coughs> that outcome indicator. So, Q1 quarter 1 project variance percentage 100 into actual cost minus plan cost divided by plan cost. My target is 5 percent improvement I am expecting. Time frame I am just putting December 2016 to April 15, 2017. Strategic alignment supports flyovers design, constructs and maintain infrastructure strategic objectives. You look at the scope. <coughs> In scope, SLC capital construction projects over 100 crore Indian rupees. So, I am defining a specific project within the given budget it needs to be executed. Out of scope, projects under 100 crore Indian rupees. So, I am putting a boundary in terms of the monetary value and the project which qualifies this criteria will only be considered for my systematic analysis and Six Sigma evaluation. Authorized by ANT Construction Limited, you can see the team sponsor ANT Construction Limited, team leader may be some names I have put, team member and process owner. HR administrator, management review team, ANT infrastructure limited, executives, board of director, schedule should be completed by 18 April 17 and review dates monthly and final review will take place in April 2017 and key milestone 
there you attach the detailed action plan. So, you can also see the gain chart define measure analyze improve and control and what to be executed when typically in this six sigma project that you can very well portray through a gain chart. Let us see the another example. I am continuing with the case of improving capacity utilization as ginger hotel Hyderabad and what could be a typical project charter. So, let me tell you you have a freedom to design your own project charter, but the important elements as I mentioned business scape, scope, project statement, project measure all these in one way or other you must include in order to make your project scope definition deliverable clear to top management as well as all the members. So, here my problem statement is poor capacity utilization resulting in loss of revenue. Problem background you can say pain, inability to accommodate customers in peak period and underutilized facility in non peak period, impact of pain 50 lakh loss per year. So, it is a huge loss and I must consider this as a critical project six sigma project. There are project measures and based on maybe my pace analysis and other brainstorming tool, I have identified that booking process is at very very low level 2 sigma, operating cost 50 lakh loss per, per year and what is my goal? I want to lift the process booking process from 2 sigma to 5 sigma. I want to reduce this loss to 0. It means no customer say should leave without getting an accommodation and my target date is 4 months. Scope is booking process, scope in Hyderabad location specific, ginger hotel may have their chain in Bhuvneshwar, Bangalore, Ahmedabad. I am specifying what is my scope, scope out other locations I am just not touching because there could be the cultural and regional factors that might be affecting my process. So, project plan define measure analyze improve and control I will start and end. So, I just specified week 1, week 3, week 2, week 7 you can tag it with date, year, month that is uh, that is in your end, but just I have put here in terms of week and then I have a team and here I just assume that I am leading this project Dr. Jitesh Thakkar with the team leader Uma Shankar member Deepak, Tusar and the hotel manager. <coughs> now, once you have the project charter, the another important issue in project is the monitoring and evaluation. Let us try to see the basics on monitoring and evaluation, so that subsequently when you apply the DMEX cycle, you become more cautious in applying monitoring and evaluation process. So, what is the difference? Key issues, is it the same thing? Many times we say yes, I monitored and I evaluated. Is it the same thing? If no, what are the differences and similarities? What are the objectives of monitoring and what are the objectives of evaluation? What kind of information do we need to monitor a project? So, just see this is a monitoring cycle and I can start with let us say the uh, review and evaluation, then subsequently I can go with assessment, I can go to design and I can go to implementation and monitoring and this cycle will keep repeating. So, within this I have the monitoring cycle and this cycle will keep repeating in order to see that how far I am from the set objectives. I have set the targets. Now, as I am executing my project, I would like to measure the performance gap at different milestones and this is where this cycle can really help me. So, the difference is very simple monitoring and evaluation. Monitoring is a cycle continuous process, evaluation is specific activity or moment. Suppose after 2 months I am taking a snap of my performance, 
what is the percentage productivity improvement what is the customer service improvement and what is the capacity utilization improvement that is the specific evaluation at specific milestone monitoring to provide information to day to day decision making some adjustment and evaluation to provide recommendation to strategic decision making and top management team member they get sensitized about changing their course of action modifying the course of action in order to bridge the gap between their stated or expected targets and the actual achievements monitoring it is carried out by the project team evaluation it is carried out by an evaluation team may be internal or external to the project team so many a times say you must have seen that when there is iso audit qs audit the internal teams are created or one function will visit other function without any bias and they would like to see their preparedness for iso qs and different kinds of quality audits so expectation is very simple the monetary system should provide information for evolution so when you achieve this you have really solved the real purpose of monitoring and evaluation both just see the project cycle and you will see the path here you will see some of the blocks so you have assessment and planning evaluation and adoption and there is lot of causality implementation and monitoring assessment and planning and implementation and monitoring so what is uh, the crux of this as you go along the path of progress your six sigma project you would find that your phases they change and hence the requirement of assessment monitoring and adoption adaptation it keeps evolving and this keeps you basically on the track of improving your processes or pursuing effectively your six sigma project so monitoring is the continuous systematic and critical review of operation in order to measure their evaluation and adjust them according to circumstances and projects objectives so if a monitoring does not lead to analysis and then to decision making it is just useless so again i will remind you inspection is non value adding ad activity similar way monitoring has no value if you just keep on monitoring but do not take any action just to share a simple example suppose you have fixed cctv camera in malls say maybe uh, on road to see the behavior of the people traffic congestion or maybe in the classroom anywhere now this camera will do what it will monitor capture and collect the data now if this data is not analyzed and used for decision making monitoring has no value if you cannot improve the behavior of the people in public which creates the societal problem if you do not improve the traffic congestion problem if you cannot reduce the number of accidents happening by you using your data collected through monitoring system i think monitoring is a waste of effort and investment so building a monitoring system requires some care there is an intervention objective as i mentioned uh, in india the road accident rate is very very high and as per the latest statistics every 3 minutes one person is dying because of road accident so it is such a huge impact societal impact and there is a need to intervene so there is an intervention objective specific indicators and questions information to collect whatever data or how you will capture through cctv camera or maybe other kind of sophisticated device source of information must be authentic choice design and test of tool for data collection processing and analysis and finally 
responsible identification and training frequency. So, if you see the scope of monitoring it is quite extensive and rigorous and then only a monitoring system can really serve its intended purpose. So, there is a caution triangulate most relevant data from various sources. You may get biased if you have collected the data from only one source use the recent and updated data develop a detailed cause and effect analysis of the identified problems and collect expert opinions and suggestions to improve the quality of your project. So, with this once again as our regular practice I would like to end the session with couple of think it question. So, that it can help you to keep yourself on the track of our Six Sigma course project and continuously motivate you to think more critically in a deeper way. So, the questions here are like this what is the importance of project charter in executing complex projects? You may think about the project like launching a missile, you may think about any kind of infrastructure big infrastructure project new product development R and D project and just think what is the importance of a project charter. What are the key components of project charter and how it helps to ensure the effective monitoring and evaluation of the project. So, once again consider a case or the case consider in question 1 try to do it. Can you develop a detailed project charter for a typical missile development project to be executed by ISRO. You will get some material on internet review it and then just try to develop your own charter keeping the scope of ISRO Indian organization in mind. How do you appreciate the importance of project charter for executing set of Six Sigma projects in an organization. So, these questions are very important exploratory you have to think brainstorm visit the industry and just try to sensitize yourself about the importance of the project charter once you have identified the right and potential project for Six Sigma implementation. So, these are the references you can use again you can read couple of things from the Meredith and Mantle and you have the Six Sigma green belt black belt certification books and these issues are very well discussed in detail in the given references. So, as a conclusion I will say project charter is your blueprint for a Six Sigma project monitoring system should provide information for evaluation and monitoring is the continuous systematic and critical review of operation to bridge the gap between your stated project objectives and the actual achievements. So, with this thank you very much I think we are going at the right pace and discussing the issues in as much interesting way as possible through various cases and examples. So, I hope you are enjoying the journey and my concern is that you do not only go through the facts, but try to visit the industry read the books see the cases on the net and try to internalize the various concepts and please keep reviewing and revising enjoy be with me.